I'm Sarah, and when I heard that monarchs travel thousands of miles each year, I got an idea. I decided to follow the monarchs on their round trip, multi-generational, multinational migration to learn from, teach about, and help save one of the world's most unique natural wonders. This is the story of that migration. It's a story of millions of monarchs, of the people in Mexico, the United States, and Canada working to protect the monarchs, and of my bicycle adventure to butter bike with these butterflies. From pine forests to desert scrublands, I've already pedaled 800 miles in Mexico. And while I really like Mexico, the biking is super tough. And I have just one question. Why, why do the monarchs travel so far south to the state of Michoacan? I mean, look, I'm so much closer to the United States right now, and there's tons of forest. As you know, the migrating monarchs live in the United States and Canada during the spring, summer, and fall. The red is what scientists call their range, or where you find them. But the United States and Canada are really cold in the winter. Trust me, I know. Unlike other insects in this range, monarchs can't survive the long cold winters. They require a winter habitat that is warmer. So if a monarch needs to find a warmer habitat, should they fly north or south of their summer range? Exactly, they need to fly south. Now, the monarchs don't want it to be too hot because when it is, they're more active and they use more energy. Ugh. That means most of Mexico is too hot for them. So if you're a monarch flying south to escape the cold, but you don't want it to be too hot, do you think it would be better to live near the bottom of the mountains or the top of the mountains? Exactly, the top of the mountains. Whenever I climb a mountain, I always bring extra clothes because typically it's colder the higher up the mountain you are. So in the winter, monarchs need to find a place that's not too hot and not too cold. Scientists call this their habitat requirements. Habitat is basically where a plant or animal lives and a requirement is like a need. So a habitat requirement are all the things like climate, vegetation, and physical features like steep hills or caves that the habitat needs to have for a species to thrive. Besides temperature, monarchs have other winter habitat requirements. Monarchs require humidity so that they don't dry out and trees to protect them from extreme weather. Turns out North America is full of lots of different types of habitats. And as a biologist, I've gotten to explore a lot of them. And I've gotten to study the frogs that call them home. I studied Yosemite toads that live only in alpine meadows in the Sierra. Tailed frogs that need cold, fast-flowing creeks in the Rocky Mountains. And the giant water frog that only lives in one lake in the Altiplano of Bolivia and Peru. Every place I've worked, has a unique set of plants and animals that call that habitat home because it meets all their habitat requirements. The habitat requirements of the monarch are very different in the summer than in the winter. In the summer, monarchs require, or need, their habitat to be full of nectar plants and milkweed, to be warm and have shelter available for cold snaps, rainy weather, and at night. The monarchs can find summer habitat throughout the eastern United States and Canada, but in the winter they must fly to the transverse neovolcanic belt where on just 12 mountaintops the eastern populations of migrating monarchs can find suitable winter habitat. So while the summer range of the monarchs is huge, the winter range is tiny. It's just 73 miles wide. These mountains are 10,000 feet above sea level and give monarchs a home from November to March. They can survive here because the temperature is practically perfect. It's humid enough that they don't dry out, it's warm enough that they don't freeze, and it's cold enough that they're less active and can save their energy. 
Not just that, but the steep hillsides are covered in a special type of tree called the Oyamel fir. The monarchs cling in dense clusters to the Oyamel firs and use the trees for protection from rain and ice storms and the cold nights. Even when it's really cold, the trees help make sure the monarchs don't freeze. The Oyamel is a little bit like a cup of warm tea. The monarchs can put their bellies against the trunk of the tree to stay a little bit warmer. Also, the branches of the tree act like blankets, or in my case, my sleeping bag, which keeps me nice and warm. And the canopy of the trees acts a little bit like a roof, or in my case, my tent to protect me from harsh weather. The Oyamel fir forest in central Mexico is not too hot, not too cold, humid, full of trees that act like blankets, houses, and heaters, and it's the perfect place for the monarchs to spend the winter. That's why we have to protect this place, and that's why I have to bike so far. Luckily, I like biking, and I really like to butter bike with the butterflies.